Hey everybody, welcome to Jay Stern Designs. If you've been following my blog, you know that I'm trying to add fun videos in addition to my more traditional blog posts. And I want you all to know this is a work in progress for me. I'm not ultra comfortable in front of the camera, but I know I will be ultra comfortable in front of the camera if I keep working at this and I keep doing them. As I work on these videos, I'm going to try to bring my true personality to life in front of the camera. So I just wanted to let you all know that that's part of what I'm doing. Um, in addition to that, I also want to bring you really detailed how-tos on different things that I'm working on. And on my last blog post, I mentioned that it was time to rev up my shirt pattern and my pants pattern now that the jeans are finished. So before I do that, I just want to give you a peek at my Japanese denim jeans that I'm wearing them now, along with one of my t-shirts that I made for my t-shirt pattern. And I just, I'm in love with this pattern. I'm in the process of producing it into a pattern to sell. So, you know, look for that in the next month or so. What I think I've realized is that for certain shapes, having a straight side seam might actually help an overall fit. I was really skeptical when I started working on the pattern because, you know, I thought, oh my goodness, if you have a straight side seam, how can you possibly have any shape to your jeans? So I tried it and I really, really like it. And I think the reason why it works for me is I don't have any hips. And if you notice, my where I wear my jeans to where my hips are, it's almost straight. So for all you ladies who have a straight figure, this pattern will really make it a lot easier for you to fit your jeans. Um, that's not to say you need to be a certain size because every size woman could be a straight shape. So I guess what I mean by that is this isn't like a skinny girl pattern, it's a straight lady pattern. And I'm going to work with this a little bit more. There are things about these jeans that I'm wearing that I don't like. My rise is too high and there's a few other things I want to tweak. But overall, I can wear them all day. I don't feel like I have to pull them up. I can sit, I can stand. I love them. And that was really with a minimal amount of change to the pattern after my first muslin. So I'm kind of excited about that. And I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to show you some of the details. Um, so check that out. And then I'm going to get going with a quick tutorial on how to match stripes on a shoulder on the shirt pattern. All right, so I want to try to give you a full view of my jeans. Okay, so you can see how they fit. Here's the front. And then here's the side. Don't mind my shirt. I'm sorry, I'm going to pull it up so you can see. Here's the back. I did flat pockets in the back. So you can see I've got a little flap. And I have my new top stitched um, jean back pocket design. Notice I don't have a lot of denim pulling behind my leg or I don't have any diagonal wrinkles. I also cut the yoke on the bias so I could make it a little bit smaller to snug it up into the small of my back a little bit and I think that really helped with fitting. And here's the other side with the other coin pocket that's got the um, flap as well. And you know I've got my, my front fly. All right, so that's the, the full view of my jeans. If you notice, I made a really wide jean pocket opening. Um, I changed that to be a little bit more traditional for the um, pattern that I'm producing, but this is a really exaggerated opening for a front pocket. I can pinch out probably an inch and a half in the front. So you can see, like if I turn to the side, you can see that I can probably shorten my front crotch length and it will get rid of some of this extra I have here. So I'm going to do that when I make my next pair, but you know, just still, I think they're wearable. So that's a peek at my jeans. Okay, so on to our tutorial. I bought some really, really nice shirt fabric in New York City last summer when I was working on this pattern initially, and I was gonna make myself a bunch of different 
shirts. And then of course, all this other stuff got in the way and I didn't make any shirts. So I've already got my back piece cut out and my shirt pattern has a center back seam, but because these stripes are so narrow, I cut it without the center back seam so I wouldn't have to worry about you know, matching a stripe up all the way down the center of my back. So now I'm gonna cut out the fronts and I realized I have to match the stripe on the shoulder and on the side seam. And it's a little tricky because they're really skinny stripes. So I traced a fresh copy of my pattern and I marked the stripes on the shoulder of the back pattern piece. And then I transferred them to the front pattern piece to cut out my fronts. And what I noticed immediately was that the stripes would not match up. Now I can't pivot the pattern so that the stripes match up on the shoulder because then the vertical stripes going down the front won't be straight with the straight of grain of the shirt. Okay, I've lined my front pattern piece on my striped fabric on the straight of grain and my center front edge is aligned with the blue stripe perfectly. What I want to show you is that the guidelines for my stripe start to, they, they start off matching. So you can see that this first one matches, the second one matches, the third one almost matches. The fourth one is not matching, not matching, and it gets worse and worse and worse till the last one is almost matching up with the next stripe over. It should be matching here, but it's almost matching over here. The reason why that's happening is the slope of the shoulder from the neck to the armhole is slightly different in the front pattern piece than the back pattern piece. All right, so my plan was I was gonna show you how to match stripes on a shoulder. So I realized a quicker solution to my problem to make this shirt is to create a yoke in the back shirt pattern piece because then you don't have to match the stripes up on the shoulder seam. The good news is drafting a yoke is super easy. So let me show you how to do that and then I can get on with making my shirt instead of spending the rest of the day trying to match stripes on my shoulder. The way you draft a yoke is you determine the depth of it that you want it to be. So I'm going to have mine be four inches from the base of the neckline. I have a half an inch seam allowance here. Let me just make a note of it. All right, so here's my half inch seam allowance. Okay, so I'm going to measure down four inches from there, and I'm just gonna make a mark. Draw a line across, horizontally across the back pattern, and then you slash it, and then you end up with your back yoke pattern piece and the rest of your back shirt piece. All right, so now that I have a yoke, I don't have to worry about matching my stripes because I can orientate the fabric. So like if I cut my yoke out, I can cut it out so the stripes are going this way instead of up and down like the front piece is gonna be. So I can just do this and then I don't have to worry about it. So that's the nice part about working with a yoke. And the last thing I have to do to finish these pattern pieces is, it, is to add seam allowances. And I'm just gonna add a half an inch to both cut edges. So I'm just going to tape my pattern on here to this pattern paper. And I'm just going to measure a half an inch So 
I'm just going to add that. You know, I'm going to finish like here. Here. Okay, then I can cut that out and I have a completed back yoke. Now I've got my fixed pattern piece. All right. All right. So because I already cut out my back piece is I'm going to have to recut the back to take off this top portion. So I'm just going to line my pattern piece back up and I'm just going to cut that off now. This. Okay, so that's how you draft a yoke pattern piece. Um, I'm going to work on this shirt a little bit more and then I'll do a second um, video working with my shirt to show you my progress and um, I'll have tips for more things as I go along. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching Jstern Designs. If you have any questions, please post them on my blog or send me an email at info at jsterndesigns.com. Um, customer questions really make good video material, so feel free to send me your questions.